Hello everyone, my name is Rajaram and I hope you are having a great day today. Allow me to be your technology consultant and take you through some of the technology which is very important for e-sports gamers. The tech we'll understand in depth today are reflex and how higher frame rates help gamers. Today 73% of GeForce gamers play competitive multiplayer games which is e-sports as well as e-sports. The most watched esports games today rival traditional sports, जैसे कि NFL Super Bowl, when it comes to viewership, with esports rivaling traditional sports in terms of both viewership as well as play time. It is more important than ever for gamers कि वो अपने PC and graphics hardware को इस तरह से tune करें ताकि उनको best performance मिल पाए in games में. This is why several years ago, NVIDIA invested in an e-sports lab staffed with NVIDIA research scientists dedicated to understanding how players and their hardware perform in e-sports games. One of the groundbreaking technologies to come out of this lab is Reflex, a revolutionary suit of GPU, G-Sync displays and software technologies that measure and reduce system latency in these competitive games, aka click to display latency. Now reducing latency is critical for competitive gamers because it allows the PC and display to respond faster to the user's mouse and keyboard inputs, thus enabling players to acquire enemies faster and take headshots with greater precision. Let me try to make it even easier to understand. Let's say Latency is a measure of time describing the delay between a desired action and the expected result. Suppose that you are using a credit card for payment online or at a grocery store. The delay it takes for the purchase to be confirmed, we can say latency. Gamers usually experience two kinds of latencies, uh, system latency and network latency. Talking about network latency, it is usually measured in ping times or round trip bolte hai between game client and network server. Ya game ka server aap bol sakte ho. More the ping time, higher the latency. It is different from network instability issues, mind it. Network instability issues can cause packet loss and out of order packets. Higher ping times can affect our gameplay in a few different ways depending on how the game's networking code uh, handles this network latency. Delayed hit confirmations, uh, delayed interactions, delayed position of opponents which is also known as speaker's advantage. Network instability can cause problems like rubber banding, uh, desync in games. Let's watch a beautifully created video explaining how latency works and how NVIDIA Reflex works to reduce this latency. Hi, this is Tony Tomasi with NVIDIA. We've spoken before about the importance of high frame rate in competitive games. Today, we're going to talk to you about the importance of low latency in competitive gaming. To understand the importance of latency, let's break down the two types of latency. The first is network latency, which is the time it takes your computer to communicate with the servers and those servers determine things like hit detection and position in competitive games. In this example here, the player takes a shot, and there's a noticeable delay between that shot and the ultimate kill confirmation. That delay is network latency, also known as lag. The second type of latency is local or system latency, which is things like input processing, your game engine, rendering, and ultimately display. What we have here is a user firing a gun. To fire the gun, he's going to click a mouse. On the lower right-hand side of the screen, you'll see an LED that's lit up. That LED will go off when he fires the gun. The delay between the light going off and the muzzle flash on the screen is system latency. That delay is also called motion to photon or click to muzzle flash. Delays between your input and what you see on the screen make it difficult to aim, which hurts your ability to compete. Putting those two concepts together, let's talk about Peeker's Advantage, another scenario common in multiplayer games. Peeker's Advantage is when the attacker typically is able to see the defender by working an angle first and the defender has to wait for all the latencies to accumulate before he can see the attacker. On the left-hand side is a system with low system latency, and on the right-hand side is a system with high system latency. 
both of them have the same network latency. As you can see here, the system with the high system latency is at a disadvantage compared to the system on the left. That user gets a much greater advantage in terms of visibility. If we reverse the scenario and take a look at it from the defender's perspective, you can see that with a faster system latency, it actually mitigates some of that peeker's advantage, giving them the opportunity to take that shot first. The first component of latency is going to be your input latency or your peripheral latency. Typically, this is your mouse and your keyboard. The second component is going to be your input sampling. That's the computer itself receiving inputs from your input devices and then sending them to the game for processing for things like input and position. After that becomes the game engine itself, the game latency, things like visual effects, audio, local simulations, visibility, that sort of thing. The next component after that is your rendering latency. This is composed of your render queue and the GPU actually producing the frames. The final piece of that is compositing. That's the Windows compositor taking the frame and scheduling it to be composited with other windows. Ideally, you would avoid compositing by running in a full screen exclusive mode. The sum of these is your PC latency. The final component is your display latency, which is comprised of three things. The scan out rate, which is the time it takes to scan the frame buffer that your GPU has rendered into the display. This is impacted by your display's refresh rate or its hertz. The faster the rate, the shorter that time. The second component is your display processing. This can be things like HDR processing or fancy temporal processing. This can actually be a substantial amount of time as some TVs can accumulate multiple frames. And the third component is your pixel response time, also known as your gray to gray. This is the time it takes a pixel to respond and change color when it's given an input. The sum of those is your display latency. Putting all those components together, you get your end-to-end -end system latency. In this simplified GPU-bound pipeline, we're gonna break down some of the components that comprise latency. On the y-axis, we show the various events in latency, and on the x-axis is time moving from left to right. You can track a frame through the pipeline by following a single color from the top to the bottom starting with input latency, to game engine, to the render queue, to GPU rendering, and ultimately to display. The second component to notice is the render queue. There's actually two frames being queued between the game engine and the ultimate GPU work on the renderer. That frame queue is latency. Those frames are there because the GPU is not clearing frames as fast as the CPU can present it. That's a GPU limited scenario. That latency in the render queue contributes to the overall end-to-end -end latency. The final thing to take note of is the CPU work in its relationship to the GPU. In a GPU bound scenario, the CPU must wait for a prior frame to complete before it is allowed to continue with producing the next frame. NVIDIA's Reflex SDK allows developers to optimize the latency of their game pipeline in a couple of unique ways. The first is it allows them to eliminate that render queue entirely. And you notice on this diagram, there's no frames queued up for the GPU, which reduces the end-to-end -end system latency. The second thing is it allows the CPU work to be aligned just in time with the rendering so that the rendering gets the most up-to-date information possible from the game engine before it renders. At the other end of the spectrum is a CPU-limited game. In this scenario, the CPU is actually slower than the GPU, which means the latency is small and there is no render queue because the GPU is able to consume the frames faster than the CPU can actually produce them. You may wonder in a CPU-bound scenario, does the GPU make any difference at all? And the answer is yes. Even though the CPU is your limiting factor, the GPU's render time is an overall contributor to your latency. A faster GPU reduces that render time, reducing the overall latency, even though you're CPU limited. Why does this all matter? As you can see on the chart here, lower latencies can absolutely improve your mechanical skill. As you reduce your latencies, your performance can improve. Looking at some common gaming configurations, in this case with Fortnite, you can see there's quite a range of latencies. If you look at a game console playing Fortnite, your typical latency is right around 100 milliseconds. Your average PC is probably similar when it's running at 60 hertz. If you do some optimizations of that PC to improve things, you can cut the latency about in half. And if you push the envelope with faster hardware, or faster display, and state-of-the-art software optimizations, you can drive the latencies on a PC with Fortnite to as low as 15 milliseconds. So, what is the difference between FPS and latency? And क्या इन दोनों के बीच में कोई correlation है? Uh, in general, higher FPS मतलब lower latency. However, ये relationship हमेशा one is to one नहीं होता है. To better understand, let's take a step back and think about how we can measure our interaction with our PC. First, there is a number of pictures our display can present per second. The number is throughput. या FPS जिसे बोलते हैं, frames per second बोलते हैं. The second way is the time 
it takes for our actions to be reflected in one of those pictures a duration called system latency if you have a pc that can render 1000 fps but it takes one second for our input to reach the display that would be bahut hi poor experience right conversely if our actions are instantaneous but the frame rate is only 5 fps that would also be a very bad experience right so which one matters more more than a year ago we set out to answer this very question and the findings are quite interesting we found out that system latency impacted gamers ability to complete aiming tasks in aim trainer with data from games like fortnite pubg valorant csgo we found out there is a big correlation between higher fps and lower latency which led to landing headshots more frequently and boosting a gamer's kill to death ratio of course that is what a gamer wants the question now arises how do you reduce this latency the answer lies in measuring the latency and then reducing it Let's watch a beautifully created video again, explaining how we can measure and reduce our latency using NVIDIA Reflex technologies. Hi, I'm Seth from NVIDIA. As a competitive gamer, ensuring my PC is responding quickly to my actions is critical to playing at my full potential. Frames per second has been the traditional metric used to evaluate how a PC is running, but FPS is a PC's measure of throughput, not its responsiveness. In order to understand responsiveness, I need to measure my system's latency, the time it takes for a mouse click to result in new pixels on screen. However, fully optimizing and measuring latency has been virtually impossible for gamers until now. Today, we are announcing Nvidia Reflex, our low latency esports platform designed to both measure and reduce system latency. So, how can we get better latency? With the release of the Nvidia Reflex platform, we are introducing a new SDK that enables game developers to provide in-game settings to reduce system latency in GPU-intensive scenes. For top esports titles like Fortnite, Valorant, and Apex Legends that support the Reflex SDK, turning on Reflex low latency mode can give you better responsiveness, increase aiming precision, and provide you with a more up-to-date location of your opponents. In typical graphics intensive games, the CPU queues up work in a render queue so the GPU always stays fed. While this helps maximize frame rate, it also increases latency as frames are waiting in line to be rendered. The reflex low latency mode dynamically reduces the render queue by keeping the CPU perfectly in sync with the GPU. This mode also reduces the back pressure on the CPU, enabling games to sample mouse input at the last possible moment, further reducing system latency. The Reflex SDK also provides games the option to display metrics for game and render latency. These metrics can help you get started when optimizing for system latency. However, game and render latency is just part of the story. Your full system latency includes everything from mouse click all the way through to the display. In the past, measuring full system latency required a $5,000 high-speed camera and a modified mouse just to get started. Now, new G-Sync powered 360 Hz displays will come equipped with a revolutionary technology called the Reflex Latency Analyzer. This tech allows gamers to measure system latency, accurately analyzing how the PC responds to your actions. You can use any mouse with Reflex Latency Analyzer to get PC plus display latency. However, with a compatible mouse from Logitech, Razer, or Asus, you will be able to measure full peripheral latency and get full end-to-end -end system latency. To start measuring end-to-end -end system latency with Reflex, first take your mouse and plug it directly into the G-Sync 360 Hz display. Be sure to connect the USB cable from the monitor to the PC as well. The display's Reflex USB port is a simple pass-through that watches for mouse clicks without adding any latency. And that's it for the hardware setup. From GeForce Experience, you can use the new Performance View to get real-time latency metrics. To view the latency metrics, navigate to the performance overlay options and enable the latency metrics setting. Great, we are all set up and ready to go. Let's hop into a custom map and test our latency. Reflex Latency Analyzer works by detecting the clicks coming from your mouse and measures the time it takes for the flash to happen on a particular location on the screen. 
that location can be moved around to best fit the anticipated flash. In this case, let's choose the assault rifle and check our position with the on-screen display of the monitor. Let's slightly adjust this to make sure that the rectangle is fully capturing the flash. This looks about right. Awesome. Reflex Latency Analyzer is able to accurately measure how long it took for the mouse click to reach the screen. In this case, the achieved system latency is about 15 milliseconds. That's about average for a 360 FPS system. On a 144 FPS system, you can expect anywhere from about 40 to 55 milliseconds of system latency. In addition to the Reflex SDK, overclocking and faster hardware are great ways to reduce latency. As part of the performance view, GeForce Experience now supports GPU tuning. The new automatic tuner finds the best overclock and maintains your GPU tuning profile for you. We highly recommend automatic tuning as the advanced algorithm is designed to fit a custom overclock to your GPU. With NVIDIA Reflex and GeForce Experience, users can accurately measure and reduce system latency with ease. Using the Reflex Low Latency Mode in games and the Reflex Latency Analyzer on new 360Hz G-Sync displays, you can queue confidently into a competitive match and know that your system is both responsive and behaving exactly as it should. Check out our growing list of NVIDIA Reflex games, monitors, and mice partners on GeForce.com. Last but not the least, let's understand which GPUs support NVIDIA Reflex. To start with, NVIDIA Reflex works very well starting with GTX 900 and higher GPUs in all the top competitive games. With a popular mid-range card like a G4 GTX 16 series GPUs, especially 1660 Super and above, gamers can expect up to 33% improvement in PC responsiveness with NVIDIA Reflex. Sone pe suhaga agar aap usme ek GeForce RTX 3080 and 360Hz G-Sync panel eSports display jise bhi kaha jata hai, if you connect that, gamers can play like pros with lowest latency possible, thereby winning more games. Now let's hear what our gaming influencers have to say, followed by our storage partner WD.